let's talk bandwidth, shall we? Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, when I'm working with, say, Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate Ultra or any of these where I'm doing a virtual class with my students, I have to be conscious of how much bandwidth is being used. So when we have a live class, if I'm doing a one-on-one, -on -one, for example, with students, say it's in office hours or some, bandwidth is relatively low, even if the videos are both on. But if we both switch to just audio, it definitely cuts it down a lot. Now, if I go to a class, and I have myself and other students on with video, my bandwidth goes up quite a bit. And I have to be conscious of that because some students don't have access to good internet access. So I started to explore some of the different ideas about how we could try and make this work, especially when I'm trying to present some slides or something like that. Now, I don't lecture necessarily. Um, in fact, I rarely do. But I do use PowerPoint quite a bit to guide discussions and things like that. So I'll pose questions and I'll bring up things that I want us to talk about and things like that. So I still do use PowerPoint slides quite a bit, especially um, when I'm in a class, because otherwise just me as a talking head talking gets kind of boring, kind of like what's happening right now. So how can I reduce the bandwidth but still be able to present slides. And that's where I came across the idea of using PowerPoint online through the Microsoft 365 account that I have through the school to be able to present my slides live. What that means is that my slides are not going to be, I'm not going to be presenting my slides in Zoom by sharing my screen. Because when I do that, it's a high bandwidth video that's going out. So what you can actually do is have your slides appear as a website that students can go to. And that website is dynamic, meaning that as I change my slides on my screen, it automatically changes on their screen. But it's not video, so the bandwidth is much lower. So this is a handy little tool. There's actually more tips to this I'll give at the end. But let's show you how this works first. So I have a PowerPoint presentation that is in my OneDrive. This is in my browser. This is Chrome. I've loaded it up and it's in my um, OneDrive. I've opened it up in the browser, so not in PowerPoint itself, the, the app. And here are my slides here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Slideshow and I'm going to, there's a little drop down arrow beside Present Lives. You don't have to click on this each time, but you do want to set it up the first time. So I want to set it to only people in my organization because I only want people who are, in this case, students at my school be able to access it. So then once I do that, I just click on present live and it automatically switches to this. Every time you do that, when you start a session with us, it'll give you a unique code. So and it'll also give you a QR code that they can scan. So if they want to do it on their mobile device, they can pull it up, scan it, boom, or they can type in the code. So there's a website ppt.ms slash and then there's a code. You can actually just go to ppt.ms and then just give them the code. Um, so in this case here, I'm going to I've got it over here. And I'm going to uh, pull it up over here just so you can see how the numbers change over here. So that's 4W7, 4WJ, 7Y. Now, if you try this later on, it won't work for you because I will end the session and then it won't work. So I'm going to click on join over here. Now, I am pulling it up over here. And when th once that's pulled up, and I'm logged in and everything's good, this changes to one. Great. Now what's really interesting about this is because I'm using a microphone here, one of the other things that's also happening is you can't see it over here, but I can see my slides. Well, not quite yet, but where the slides would be. And it's already doing a transcription, auto transcription on the right hand side for students. So I'm looking at the transcriptions and it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's you know, high level, but it gives a captioning, auto captioning thing, really quite cool way of doing this. So, all right, so I'm going to start my PowerPoint presentation. So as soon as I click on it, I can see my slide change automatically on the mobile device as well, too. So I can see it here and I can see the transcription. And as I advance through the slides, it automatically changes over here. What's really cool about this is that they can also add comments as well too. So there are reactions that they can add to it. So for example, they can give a thumbs up or something on that. Um, and then they can also, in this case, they can 
um, again they have the transcriptions and all that stuff you can hide that you can make the slides full screen if you want that type of thing as well but in the transcriptions it actually has shown the slide number and the transcriptions below so that's kind of cool all right so we have our slides over here I'm going through my slides here and I get to the end and that's it over here on the side here which you can't see is asking how was the presentation and you can give a rating so for example I'm gonna give it a rating of 5 out of 5 it was perfect then ask a few questions about slide design speaker skills content interaction with the audience or any other comments and this is where students can add comments down below um, I will just add general comment and hit submit now they don't see all they see is that it's ended over here they can't they can't do anything else with that at this point here but let's see what's happened over here so what also happens is whenever you run a session and I end the session um, what will also happen is it automatically creates a Microsoft form for that session as well and what's really cool about that is then you get your comments back so here's the one response and I can view that I can see the responses here and here's the comment that was given so that's kind of cool because students can then provide a little bit of input even though they're just on their phone they can actually type in some stuff so they can mute themselves and do some typing as well so that's how you can do this now some tips about this so number one this is also really cool good tool for breakout rooms. So if you have breakout rooms, one of the things I've often found is it's really hard to communicate with students in the breakout rooms. You can use the chat sort of, you can use announcements sort of, depending on the device that you're using, that type of thing. But I've actually used this in my face-to-face -face classroom as well, and that is to have slides advance automatically, but the slides actually have a series of prompts or questions or pictures that just encourage the discussion along or that type of thing. So what you can do is, have them go off into their groups using the PowerPoint um, code that you've given them. And you can have all of them just pull it up on their own devices, or one person can share if they want. But again, the idea is to lower bandwidth. So they can each pull it up on their device, and they can leave their audio on. And then I will change the slide, bring up the prompt. They see the prompt between all four of them, or five of them, or how many in the breakout room, and they can discuss it based on what's there and so then I can keep the conversation rolling at a certain time because I'll advance the slide when I think the conversation should be shifting to the next question and so they can actually go ahead and do that so that's kind of cool that is a way of being able to communicate with the students generally keeping the conversation going and um, you don't have to be in the breakout room with them so there's another handy tip for you Hopefully that helps you in kind of making some decisions that might help your students, especially when it comes to bandwidth.